what inspires me is exploration. I love reading and doing research. That's like my background from the internet and social media, books, people, new innovation, and my own personal experiences. My mind begins to explore different possibilities, especially when I'm creating something. I'm a pretty analytical person, so I like the concept of trial and error. It brings me joy, motivation, and purpose when I'm able to apply my mind and create something different. For me, it's more of a learning experience and, and I thrive on discovering something different. It's exciting. There are no exact words to describe my aesthetic. People say I'm eccentric, weird, different. I say all of the above. Because my fashion sense has always been about exploration. I love to create. It's exciting. And I like to try everything and put my own personal spin to it. Yeah, I think that's what fashion should be about anyways. I love the vulnerability and making people think when they see me. Curiosity brings new ideas I think and I don't mind being the first of things making people see things in a different way and hopefully inspires other people I've always just created my own image um, where I felt like I had the freedom to express my own aesthetic it was, it was a really spontaneous experience. I went to my supply cabinet and found certain things that I thought would apply for me to be able to construct this bag and and I just spent a couple of hours brainstorming and, and creating a strategy in my head on how this actual autumn was going to be made and Voila! It, it, it just... I just did it. Um, I was curious about how it was made and, and, and wanted to learn the craftsmanship that goes behind this bag. But I just wanted to challenge myself. I remember an art class that I took in college and we were asked to draw one of Michelangelo's paintings to redraw that and it took me hours to do one and the reason why we were asked to do that is to understand how Michelangelo had had created this painting or this sculpture and and it was pretty much the same thing I was lingering in my head I was like let me understand how this works and then maybe I can get some sort of inspiration with this bag and and creating my own design out of it, you know, by applying what I learned um, from this experience. Why people are buzzing about this bag. Um, and that, I think, what makes people want things in life, you know. Um, but for me, it was more of like, there's got to be a reason why. And that why is that something that I was trying to figure out. I don't know if that makes sense. So yeah, this video is going to show you how I made an inspired Celine bag tote. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Materials I use are 
foam board, pleather fabric, ruler, marker pen pencil, glue gun, sewing tools, scissors, cutting board, plastic tube, 0.25 cm diameter from Home Depot. And printing paper. As an idea, the main structure of the bag is 5 inches in width, 14 inches in height, and 12 inches in length. Disclaimer. Remember, I am aware that there are better materials that I could have used to construct this bag. But this project was spontaneous. I only grabbed whatever materials was around the house at that moment. First, I thought of using foam board to create the structure of the bag. I made two parallel incisions, but not all the way through, to create a more accurate and flexible structure. I made sure that the incision I made allows the foam board to bend like wings. I made sure that my base is 5 inches in width and 12 inches in length of measurement. The next fast forward clip, I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to cover the foam board with fabric. After I made my measurements, I'm using glue gun to bond the fabric to the foam board. Since I'm creating a two-tone color combination tote, I chose one side that I want to be the front of the bag and I added another layer of gray leather pleather fabric on top of the blue fabric to differentiate the front and the back of the bag. To hide the sim, I marked and cut the blue fabric from the base of the bag and slip through the gray fabric. This part is tricky. But it's the 3D swirly design and it's the most recognizable signature of the original design of the bag. I'm sorry, but there were no measurements that I came up with to create this design. I just eyeballed it and used my pure imagination. One thing I can share though, I glued the plastic tubing onto the stencil I made on the paper and molded the blue fabric on top of the plastic tubing and paper. I thought this was pretty cool, and this part of understanding the design inspired me on creating my own design later on. At this point, I was worried. I was trying to understand if some parts of the pan bag had a purpose or for purely aesthetic reasons. I realized that the trickiest part of creating a handbag is trying to find ways to hide the sim. Unfortunately, my sewing machine was not heavy duty enough to sew pleather, so excuse my amateur or cheap trick of using a glue gun. However, I did patiently sew the main parts of the bag that I thought was necessary for it to hold up. It was interesting because I felt like the bag was organically telling me what areas needed to be tighter or looser. Again, I apologize that this part of the bag I can't really explain. It was all based on trial and error. But I do remember cutting 14 inches by 14 inches in square shape measurement to construct the side wing panels of the bag. This next part, I will show you how I created the handles of the bag. Again, I used the same plastic tubing around 20 inches in length and wrapped it around with gray pleather fabric. If you think about the original designer bag, this was part of the handle. I assume this additional layer or aesthetic is to secure the bond of the handles to the bag. I created my own stencil based on how I pictured the original bag.
I realized that it was important to label the parts of the bag so I don't get confused. On this part, I attach a regular zipper on a matching fabric and cut an opening in the middle so the zipper will show. I'm pretty much done with the bag. Now, it's time to clean up the excess glue and threads for it to look polished.